Hey everybody, Hickok45 here. You know I like a lot of different types of firearms and shoot a lot of different types of firearms. One of my first loves are, well, that doesn't make sense if I have a lot of first loves, does it? But one of my favorite firearms uh, are revolvers. And yes, I still like even the big old revolvers like what I'm going to show you today. This is an old Colt New Service. And it is large, there's no doubt about that. Now you might wonder, you know, you know I have large hands, so that is definitely a, a large gun. Who in the world would want to use that? Who in the world would want to carry that gun? Well, the answer is, since uh, 1898, uh, lots of uh, agencies have carried that gun. The New York State Police, uh, to name a few, the uh, Texas Highway Patrol, uh, the Royal Canadian, Mounted, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, they carried it. Uh, our Border Patrol, among others. These big old revolvers were uh, carried by a lot of people and uh, law enforcement and outside of law enforcement. This, again, is a Model 1898 New Service uh, Colt, 45 Colt caliber. Came in various calibers, I think 11 different calibers before they finished the uh, production run of these guns in 1944. So it ran from uh, 1898 to 1944, these big old things and uh, various calibers, 44, 40, 38, uh, you name it, 45 Colt. And then during World War I, it was chambered for 45 ACP. We didn't have enough uh, 1911s in 45 ACP to furnish everybody and of course these, these good old new service revolvers uh, as well as Smith & Wesson you know, came to the rescue and uh, these were chambered uh, in uh, 45 ACP. They had to do some things over you know, the chamber. I mean, they're both 45, but you know, the ACP cartridge is different. Uh, some of you don't know really, you know, you, you're not as familiar with firearms, but they're a different type of cartridge and they had to do some modifications. But so this gun has seen a lot of use in uh, a lot of different theaters by a lot of different people. It was even chambered uh, for some of the, I think the Brits bought uh, quite a few of them in uh, 455 Webley. So uh, this gun has been used all over the world and uh, by a lot of people. There's a lot of interesting history, big old gun. It was uh, fairly intimidating, big old gun. Uh, I read one account where a fellow recalls back in New York State, a policeman carrying this in a, in a big old, I think a Sam Brown holster, you know, in a belt rig with uh, six or 12 big 45 Colt cartridges right up above the gun where it hung down, you know, in the, in the holster. And, uh, you know, it really was slightly intimidating. and. And that was part of the purpose, perhaps, you know, that it helps avoid a lot of trouble, you know. Nobody's going to challenge you because your gun's too small. If you're a police officer, it's 1925 or 1935, and you've got, uh, you know, these big 45 Colt cartridges, as you see here, a pile of those. So, uh, and oftentimes back then, you, know, you didn't have assistance, uh, Border Patrol especially. You know, you were on your own out there, uh, more or less, and you couldn't call for backup and have somebody racing to your to help you out, you know, right away necessarily. So uh, you had to have good armament uh, on you and close at hand. And this big old new service revolver was the ticket. Uh, big caliber, powerful gun. Now, this particular gun, uh, as I say, these were made from 1898 to 1944, you know, through World War uh, II essentially, and used you know, all the way through there. Even in World War II, some of these were used. But uh, this particular gun uh, is uh, vintage 1907. So this actual gun is over 100 years old. And it kind of looks it, doesn't it? <laughs> original grips, you know, it's all original. But uh, except the finish, which is essentially gone, right? So nice old gun. You can see Colt New Service there. See the rampant uh, horse pony, everything. And then New Service still on the barrel. So even though the finish is gone, uh, there's no question as to what it is, of course. So, nice old gun. The barrel's a little bit pitted, uh, but it still shoots. Let's take a couple shots before I gap too long. See if it will shoot. Wow, 100-year-old gun, 103 years old. Probably shouldn't be shooting it, right? Let's see if it'll fire. That's six if I'm counting correctly. It's 
Swing out cylinder. Okay. Put six more in. You see those big old 45 Colt 250 grain bullets are large caliber and uh, pretty significant. Now I'm going to fire double action a couple of times. You would not believe how stiff the spring is on this gun. You almost can't pull the trigger double action. That is stiff. It's very stiff. This gun has a built-in safety. That trigger is so hard to pull. <laughs> so uh, that, uh, that that took a lot of uh, energy right there. And uh, it, it's good training. If you can pull this thing double action and hold it on target, you know, you're a man. So anyway, very tough spring on that gun. Doesn't matter. I don't want to change it because it's all original. Uh, I could file the spring down, replace the spring, make it much easier to shoot, but I don't want to do that. I'm, even though the finish is gone, I want to kind of leave it uh, the way it is, the way it was. Nice old gun. Uh, believe it or not, it seems pretty accurate. Uh, I'll try a couple of shots across the, the range over there. Uh, again, it's kind of special to have a gun this old. And again, if the gun, gun could talk, no telling what it would tell us. Uh, the stories it could tell might have been carried by a border patrolman. You know, who knows? Uh, and again, the barrel is slightly pitted. You know, it's, it's just pitted. I won't go into what that means if you don't know. Look it up. Uh, let's go to the gong. See if we can pop him. There we go. Uh, let's see if I can get a pig or ram or something over there. All right. Woo! I was holding a little too low. Uh, with this gun, it has no rear sight. It has a fairly high front sight. So when you line this one up, you have to uh, take a really fine bead, as it's called, and uh, even over there across the hill. So I was holding a little too too low on that uh, pig first couple shots, but uh, brought it up a little bit and he knocked him over. So if uh, you miss with this gun, even the condition of it, you can tell, uh, even with the age, it's still the shooter. It's not the gun. It's, uh, neat old gun. These old revolvers are just kind of special. The simplicity of them, uh, they're just kind of fun. Now there's also, I don't know what else I can tell you about the history. I'm not an expert on, the, on these guns. I know just enough, again, to be dangerous that uh, how they were carried by a lot of people. It's hard for us to realize uh, in the year 2010, I think, how anybody would even want something that big. And my, my gosh, what a, what a monstrosity. You know, uh, who'd want to carry that big old thing? But yeah, we're going back uh, to a different time. You go back into the 1920s, 1910, 1930. We didn't have all these sleek, uh, cool little revolvers that, you know, pocket revolvers and made of scandium and uh, titanium and, and everything that, that many of us like. You know, if you wanted a powerful gun, generally it meant a big gun. You know, people just lived with it. So uh, pretty special, pretty special little gun. Now this gun not only has history of uh, uh, in and of itself, uh, in my family, this gun has some history. If I can get it right, back in the early 70s, I guess it was, mid-70s, a fellow found this uh, remodeling or tearing down an old bank somewhere in the Cincinnati area. Found this behind a safe. And I, I don't know when they found it, the 60s, 70s. My brother acquired it from that fellow somehow. And uh, he had it for a, a short period of time. I saw it. My brother wasn't a big gun guy. He had a shotgun, maybe a 22 pistol rifle, that sort of thing. And he wasn't into reloading and, you know, probably had never even owned a 45 Colt cartridge, you know. And so it was pretty easy for me to talk him out of it for 50 bucks. <laughs> and then I had it for a while. This again was in the 70s. Uh, my dad always liked it. Whenever he'd come to visit uh, from uh, Kentucky, he always was fascinated by that gun. He remembered, you know, I guess, people carrying these guns. He was more familiar with this particular gun, having been born in 1918 and uh, and being in the military. And everything. So uh, he was always trying to talk me out of it. 
And I finally realized he, he really wanted this gun, so I just essentially gave it to him. I traded him for some cast bullets or something, you know. So if he wants it, he can have it. And he really liked it. He kept it in this holster. I don't know if he bought that or if I helped him find it or what. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't listed as a holster for a new service Colt, but it, it fits okay. He kept it in this for years, decades, basically. Uh, the one gun he did keep loaded. He kept it up in a ceiling tile where, I mean, no one could have ever gotten to it or found it or, you know, known where it was. And uh, just in the event someone broke in down in the remodeled area of the, the basement and because uh, they'd be down there a lot, you know, in the family room watching TV and, you know, someone comes in upstairs it would necessarily know it. But anyway, he, he kept it down there and I think I'm the only one that knew uh, where he kept it. Uh, so, uh, and kept it loaded for a lot of years. And then when he passed away, I, uh, I, I, I got that again back now. I don't know, I guess that was around 95, 1895, 1995, excuse me, I'm not that old. Uh, so anyway, this gun has kind of gone through the circuit, even within my own family, it has a lot of interesting history. To me, just, uh, and I guess over the years, we've kind of considered it the old junker, but it really is not a junker, it has a lot of history. Uh, so. The old new service revolver. Let's take a few more shots with it while we're yapping about it. Uh, shoots the big old 45 Colt. You cannot really shoot the 45 ACP in it, even with full moon clips. I've tried that. There's just not enough space. It's not designed for that. This is truly a 45 Colt. Same caliber that the old Peacemaker fired, or a lot of them did. Let's reach out again over there at uh, maybe, oh, Top pig over there. I think I know where to hold now. Can I do it? It's another matter. Ooh, a little bit low. Felt good. Famous last words. Felt good too. A little high. Yeah, I sure hate to give up. For you all that uh, are not uh, wise about Colts and Smiths, you know, with a Colt, see that I've got one round left there, uh, and he's going to come up under the hammer if I cock it. See how he's getting ready to turn out with a Smith, the cylinder turns uh, counterclockwise. With a Colt, it turns clockwise. And I know a lot of you are worried about that and probably have uh, laid awake at night wondering about that, which way the cylinder turned on a Colt versus a Smith & Wesson. Uh, let's go out there at that big tombstone across the bank, the gully. All right, ring his bell. So, you know, it's fun shooting a Glock, but uh, or a new Smith and Wesson or a new Colt, but uh, an old gun like this. Again, when you bring them out and fire them a few times, it's, uh, it's kind of reliving a little piece of history, and. Uh, the finish, the finish wasn't totally gone. It was so bad that I took some steel wool and I just took the rest of the finish off of that thing. And, uh, you know, it's not worth a lot, but uh, it's worth a fair amount to me just because of the history of it and then the history within the family. And I like to get it out every now and then and take a few shots. I uh, thought some of you that are a little bit more familiar with history or maybe who would like to learn a little bit of history might uh, be interested in seeing that gun. It, uh, it's just one of those you stuck it, stick in the back of the safe and kind of forget about if you're not careful. Uh, but I do need to get it out a little more often because you know me, I like a 45 Colt cartridge and fire a lot of them. And this is kind of unique in my uh, battery of 45 Colt uh, guns. Again, for you, you uh, novice shooters and a lot of you folks that uh, contact me frequently who admit you know very little or nothing about guns, this one is a double action. You know, the old Peacemaker, you, had to, you have to cock it in order to fire it, but with this one, you, it's, it's double action, which means you can pull the trigger, turns the cylinder, and drops the hammer. You know, so you can fire it two ways, just like a lot of modern revolvers. So and then you have a swing out cylinder. So in its day, this was uh, this was quite a masterpiece. 1898, 1900, quite a gun. So Colt new service revolver. Uh, everything you wanted to know about one right there and here's all the nice big heavy bullets it fires so uh we may shoot a little bit after the video is over just for fun glad y'all could drop by the range today even though it's really hot i know you probably got hot and sweaty like me while you were here but uh, go get some iced tea or something refreshing and cool yourself off life is good